friends. Welcome back to Frosty Eye Candy. So I'm going to jump straight in and show you the dried and resin results. And there we go. Look at the baby. Look at these beautiful jelly beans here. And jelly beans are cells that, or we call them jelly beans because they're cells that look so ripe and plump, you could literally pick them out of the picture and eat them like a jelly bean. So this was actually the same color palette, a true kitchen sink pour where I was using up all of the colors that I had left. Uh, and I did this swipe first. You can see that one came out quite well. Uh, and then I had a few, a little tiny bit of the colors left. So I did this bloom here too. So how did we get to this? Let me run through some colors with you. First off, uh, we, we were, I were, I was using and did use uh, asparagus by TLP. And that's the green that you can see in the uh, pieces. I then used Glisten and Glisten's a beautiful uh, interference blue green pigment. And then next I was using the Liquitex Dioxazine Purple. Ah, yeah, and sorry my friends, we can see asparagus has no mark, so it is transparent. And then Glisten is semi-transparent. And then the Liquitex we're gonna put down is actually transparent. Now this is how a layering transparents and, and semi-transparents like this is how we, uh, the is a great way really to get those jelly bean cells that we're after. Next, I use Twinkle, which is also a, uh, a transparent. It's uh, the Interference Violet Blue by TLP. Then I was using Athena by TLP, new favorite. And as you can see, the square with a little line through it. Athena is also semi-transparent. And then the last tube paint we're putting down, my friends, it's the Liquitex Quinacridone Magenta. And this one, as you can see by the little empty square, is also transparent. So when we layer all these semi-transparents and transparents on top of each other, and then use a nice dark cell activator, that's what will give us, or can give us, help to give us the beautiful jelly bean cells. Okay, my friends, that's enough of me waffling up. We're gonna get the camera pointing down and we're gonna start painting, okay? So the first thing I should say is that this is a six inch wooden cradle, and that's about two and a half, maybe three ounces of white pillow and the white pillow is Glidden Premium in white satin. So that is the uh, asparagus we are putting down right there from TLP. And as you can see, the paints were a little bit thick. I had to rejuvenate them with some water, a few drops. And uh, as I said, this was a kitchen sink pour, so we were getting rid of everything that we had mixed up. That is the Glisten by TLP, the lovely interference blue-green. Just getting a nice covering all over the little puddle of the TLPs and especially the interference because I love the effect they give. So now we're putting down the uh, dioxazine purple. You can kind of see how thick it is, guys. I mean, honestly, this is a little too thick. So uh, we were really lucky with the dried results. So there we go, just using the last bits of it up and just getting an even coating of the dioxazine purple. This is the Liquitex, by the way. And now we're gonna have, it's the turn of Twinkle by this little piggy. And Twinkle is another favorite of mine. It's interference pigment and it's an interference blue violet. So that in between the dioxazine purple and then the glisten, should give us a really nice effect. Again, you can see they were a little bit thick, but you know, trial and error, let's have a go. I don't like to waste the paint. Okay, so there we go, that's the Athena by TLP. It's a beautiful kind of dusty pink color when it dries with a fantastic uh, gold shimmer to it. Absolutely beautiful pigment. Quickly becoming one of the new favorites. So now the next color I'm going to put down, my friends. Uh, this is the uh, Quinacridone Magenta. As you can see, this one was a little bit thicker than the Athena that went down. So we were really lucky that the little bloom didn't completely go to pot. <laughs> so now it's the time of the cell activator and this is the transparent, semi-transparent Prussian Blue by Amsterdam Standard Acrylics. 
and excuse the back of my head for a moment while I blow this out. So while we're just doing this, my friends, I'd love to tell you about our new Facebook group, The Acritic Crazy Train. Please search us out on Facebook and join it. It's a fantastic, fantastic ride. We have uh, many wonderful artists in the group and it's for beginners, aimed at beginners, to help you achieve these kind of results that you're seeing here right now. And also why I have your attention, we're watching these beautiful cells form. Don't forget the live JOP, the Joy of Pouring, our weekly show on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, this week we are learning, do paint quality matter in our pores? So if you're just wondering what I'm doing here, friends, it's called wetting the edges. It's not essential. Some people don't do it, but I choose to do it. It just helps the paint flow over the edge nicely rather than kind of, uh, kind of fly off because you've spun it a little too fast. With the wet edge, it helps it flow nicely over and evenly. And if we're really lucky, we're going to retain some self-definition on the edge too. But there we go, friends. <laughs> not too bad right now. Wetting the edges, I knocked it off its axis, off the middle of the spinner, but with the X on the spinner, as you can just about see, it's pretty good. So, in we go for the first spin. Bingo. And while you're watching this spin, I'd love to tell you about a fantastic online pouring course, the Shelley Art course, uh, details of which the web address are on the bottom of the screen right now. I highly recommend this course, it's fantastic. It's by, some say the inventor, I don't know, but I call her a pioneer of the art form. And I even have a 15% off discount code, which is on the screen now. So here we are for a lovely close up and look at those jelly beans, absolutely beautiful. And here we go, with a nice show of all of the pigments here. I'm just lifting it up just to move the center over a little bit so we can maintain the composure of a nice even bloom. But yes, very pretty indeed. <laughs> so here we go for the second spin then, my friends. It's very tempting just to leave it like this, but we've got to get that extra paint off. So leaving the spin at real time, friends, so you, anybody watching for the first time or learning can see how long and how fast I spin for. And it's not that fast, but just a slightly extended amount of time. Wow. I say it every time, I'm very fortunate. I couldn't have asked it to come out any better, I don't think. Absolutely beautiful. So here we go for a nice little close up, my friends. Well, just to see the piggies and the interference paints and pigments just shimmering and shining and changing the color of the whole piece there. Just, oh, I love it, this is why I do it. So here we go, that's how you get some jelly beans, my friends, a nice close up. Look at those beans, beautiful. So thank you so much for joining me, my friends. I greatly appreciate your sport watching the show. If you like what you see here, please visit my store. And as always, Happy pouring.